Uh, Dunn, we're delighted we will be joined virtually from Sri Lanka by our colleague Hanna Singer Hamdi, who is the resident coordinator for the UN system in Colombo. She will speak to you about the new humanitarian plan launched today, which calls for nearly $50 million to help more than 1.7 million men, women, and children impacted by the country's worst economic crisis since independence. The Secretary General, as you know, as we announced yesterday, is in Los Angeles, where he arrived very early this morning. He will attend the Leaders' Plenary and Leaders' Dinner at the Summit of the Americas. He expects to meet with some of the senior officials attending the summit. We will share readouts with you as we get them. He will be back here in New York tomorrow. Our Deputy Secretary General, Amina Mohammed, uh, started a visit to Kazakhstan, and she met with President Kasim Jomar Tokayev. The meeting covered a range of issues, including the government's approach to make all state institutions people-centered, Kazakhstan's voluntary national review for 2022, and plans to operationalize commitment to decarbonization by 2060. The Deputy Secretary General also met with Deputy Foreign Minister Arkan Rakumetulin, and then uh, later met with several civil society organizations under the Spotlight Initiative Regional Program. The S Deputy Secretary General visited Uzbekistan yesterday, where in the capital Tashkent she was received by the President. They discussed a wide range of issues, including implementation and financing of the Sustainable Development Goals, regional stability, climate change, adaptation, mitigation, and the consequences of the ongoing Aral Sea crisis, as well as human rights and gender equality. During her one-day visit, the Deputy Secretary General also had meetings with women leaders, the chairperson of the Senate, young leaders, and our UN colleagues. In from Myanmar, our acting resident and humanitarian coordinator, Ramanathan uh, Balakrishnan, said today that the UN team on the ground is deeply saddened by the death of Mio Mint Tut, who had been working for the World Health Organization as a driver for nearly five years. Uh, we send our heartfelt condolences to his family. In a statement, the acting resident humanitarian coordinator appealed to all parties and stakeholders to respect the neutrality of the uh, UN and humanitarians. He said, we expect an impartial investigation to the incident and for perpetrators to be held accountable. Mr. Uh, Balakrishnan said, during these difficult times, the UN team continues to stay and deliver essential humanitarian and development support for the people of Myanmar. Quick update from South Sudan, where a peacekeeping uh, mission is, was facilitating a women's leadership forum that took place this week in the western Bar El Ghazal. 57 women parliamentarians took part in the forum to promote the role of women in peace and, secure, peace and political processes in South Sudan. Several of them highlighted the impact of women's efforts in achieving stability across the state and underscored the need for opportunities at the national level for women to lend their voices to the peace process. Elsewhere in the country, in Malakal, which is an Upper Nile state, the UN mission provided training on child protection to 30 officers from the South Sudanese Defense Forces, as well as security forces. The training focused on ending and preventing grave violations against boys and girls, as well as conflict-related sexual violence. Ending these grave offenses is one of the key aspects of the 2018 Revitalized Peace Agreement for South Sudan. The uh, UN Food and Agriculture Organization today released its latest Food Outlook report, um, and it is grim. It shows that the global food import bill is on course to hit a new record of $1.8 trillion this year. But higher prices and transportation costs rather than volumes account for the bulk of the expected increase. According to FAO, the global food import bill is projected to rise by $51 billion from 2021, of which $49 billion reflect higher prices. The report notes that the least developing countries are anticipated to undergo 5% cont contraction in their food import bills um, this year. FAO has proposed a food import financing facility to provide balance of payment support for the low-income countries and most reliant on food imports as a strategy to safeguard their food security full report is online. And the World Investment Report 2022 is released today by the UN Conference on Trade and Development. It shows that the flows of foreign uh, direct 
investment recovered to pre-pandemic levels in 2021, hitting $1.58 billion trillion dollars, a 64% increase compared with 2020. But the report warns that the prospects for this year are grimmer. UNCTAD notes that this year business and investment climates have changed dramatically as the war in Ukraine has resulted in a triple crisis of high food, fuel, high food, high fuel prices, and tighter financing. Other factors clouding the foreign direct investment horizon include renewed pandemic impacts, the likelihood of more interest rates in major economies, negative sentiments in financial markets, and a potential recession. The report stresses to that to cope with environment uncertainty and risk aversion, developing countries must get significant help from the international community. And our colleagues at the UN Refugee Agency have invited uh, all of you, New York-based press corps from the UN, to a virtual and embargoed press conference with High Commissioner Filippo Grandi. That will take place next, uh, this mon next Monday, June 13th, in Geneva. He will speak about the latest UNHCR annual global trends report on forced displacement. We'll send you a video link shortly. Uh, tomorrow at 11 a.m., there'll be a hybrid briefing here by the permanent representative of South Africa to the UN, Ambassador Matu Joini, on preparations for the sixth annual Peacekeeping Partnership Symposium, scheduled from the 21st to the 25th of June in Pretoria in the Republic of South Africa. Lastly, I will end uh, with a senior personnel appointment. The Secretary General is appointing uh, Rabab Fatima of Bangladesh. As a high representative for the least developed countries, landlocked developing countries, and small island developing states, otherwise known as the longest title of any UN official. Um, she succeeds Courtney, Jamaica, uh, Courtney Rattray of Jamaica, who, as you know, uh, went on to become the chef de cabinet for the Secretary General. The Secretary General wishes to extend his appreciation and gratitude also to Heidi uh, Schroederus Fox of Finland who was the Deputy High Representative for the Office and Director for her dedication and commitment uh, during the interim period when she was Acting High Representative. Uh, Ms. Fatima brings to the position more than 30 years of experience in national and international civil service. And as you very well know, she is currently the permanent representative of Bangladesh to these United Nations here in the city of New York. Edie. Uh, thank you, Steph. Does the Secretary General have any comment on a court in Donetsk in eastern Ukraine um, sentencing two Britons and a Moroccan to death for supporting Ukraine in the war? First of all, we stand against the death penalty. We always have and we always will. Um, and we would call on all the combatants who have been um, uh, detained uh, to be afforded uh, international protection and, and to be treated according to, uh, uh, to the Geneva Conventions. Um, and a follow-up on um, the briefings uh, yesterday. Is there um, any uh, new... Um, word on travels, perhaps, by either Mr. Griffiths or Ms. Grinspun. No, ma'am. Yes, sir. Hi, Stefan. First, I like your tie today. Thank you. I'm ready. For, there's a garden party this afternoon I have to attend. All right. So the Secretary General went to Los Angeles today. Um, will he make any public um, uh, statements or, or, or announcements uh, in that summit? Uh, it's still a little bit unclear. We do expect him to speak uh, at the, uh, the leaders' event. Uh, and once that's confirmed, uh, we will send you his remarks. Uh, because we know the host country, United States, didn't invite Cuba, Venezuela, and Nicaragua. Does the appearance of the Secretary General mean that UN said UN is okay with this? Um, the, the 
any questions as to the guest list, the organization should be addressed to the United States uh, mission here. Uh, for our part, the Secretary General uh, was invited to attend uh, the summit, um, as most, as he has in the past, or at least most of his predecessors have uh, in the past. He was invited to attend and speak to the leaders' event, and he will do so. It's quite chaotic. I mean, I mean the, the the summit of the Americas. There are three countries got uh, didn't get the invitations, and several countries boycotted this, not sending the leaders, but rather Minister of Foreign Affairs to to Los Angeles. Any response from the Secretary General okay, since the, he the was the level here, of you know which what which official member state sent to any international conference is their sovereign decision. Yep. Merci, Steph. Uh, Ukraine officials have accused Russia of stealing tons of grain in Ukrainian areas under Russian control. Uh, in this regard, the U.S. administration has alerted 14 countries, most in Africa, that Russian ships filled with stolen Ukrainian uh, grain could be headed their way. Does the Secretary General aware of uh, this accusation? If those allegations are true, is there any actions on the UN side? In meantime, does this could uh, has any impact on the ongoing uh, green deal, which uh, which is the UN is working hard on it? Thank you. Okay, I mean, I have uh, we've seen these uh, reports. I have nothing to add to what I said. I think uh, two days ago on this, so you can refer to what I've already said. For our part, uh, we continue to be determined uh, to try to find a solution uh, to the global food crisis, to the uh, crisis also involving fertilizer. Uh, the sooner we get uh, Ukrainian grain out uh, to international markets uh, under well-monitored uh, conditions, the sooner we get uh, Russian grain and fertilizer also out to market, um, the better it will be for uh, hundreds, if not millions, if not more people in the world, as, uh, as, as it was pretty clearly explained yesterday. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, one, one month now since the killing of Al Jazeera correspondent uh, Shirin Abu Akla, and we haven't heard anything from, from the Israeli side, either regarding the accountability or at least they are conducting any uh, kind of serious uh, investigation on this crime? I, I think that's a, it's a very valid question, but it's a question to ask uh, to ask the Israeli side. I can't, I, I can't, and don't uh, don't speak for them. The ICC is independent uh, from the from the Secretary General. What we support is a way to find out the answer as to how she was killed, why she was killed, and for those responsible to be held accountable through a transparent uh, investigation. Edie, and then we'll go to Ali on the line, and then we'll go to our guest. Um, a question, um, does the Secretary General have any comment on the announcement today by IAEA Chief Rafael Grossi that um, Iran has started removing 27 surveillance cameras from nuclear sites across the country. I support Mr. Grassi's uh, work. He is the, in the lead for the UN system on this issue. Uh, we also reiterate uh, our call for Iran uh, to live up to its commitments uh, under agreements with the IEA. We feel that's very important. Mr. Barada. Uh, thank you, Steph. While I uh, uh, reinforce my uh, uh, appreciation to your uh, colorful necktie, uh, I, I have a question first that I sent you uh, a few emails and you uh, did not um, answer them. Uh, I not even acknowledging them. I, I, Can you I, give I, me an explanation? I, apolo please? I apologize uh, if I didn't see your or acknowledge your message, but I'm happy to answer a question. You can give me a call. We can do it here. Uh, and I see you've moved inside from your previous perch, so I don't know if that's a sign of the question to come. <laughs> but 
Okay. Uh, then um, I, um, I have a question about why the uh, Mr. Secretary General hasn't been able to appoint um, a special envoy uh, uh, in Libya. Can you have, uh, can you answer this question, please? Well, as I think it comes as no, uh, it is not breaking news uh, that there are differences of opinions uh, within a number of member states, uh, within the Security Council. And that is all, it, that also, uh, these posts are also increasingly challenging uh, to fill. Uh, once we have someone uh, that we can put forward, that we will put forward to Security Council, we will. Benno. Uh, but uh, as, as, Russia, as Russia is involving directly in a conflict in Ukraine, and obviously there is, it's less, less likely to, to have an agreement between the Security Council members about anything uh, at this point. So does that mean that the SG is going to wait until the, there is some kind of reco reconciliation between um, the Russia and other countries in the, in the council? We, in we, we, have, special envoys? we have full faith in the ability of Security Council members to come uh, together on certain issues where they remain divided on others. Uh, not too long ago, even on Ukraine, they. They came together, I think, on a, on a press statement uh, supporting the Secretary General's uh, efforts. Um, our hope and optimism knows no bounds. So does our determination. Optimistic? You're optimistic about Libya? No, I'm not saying I'm optimistic about Libya. What I said is I am always optimistic about the ability of Security Council members uh, to come together. But also you said that these jobs are increasingly no. hard to fill. What do you mean by that? Is it it's like the lack of good candidates? Is it no, the it's not a lack divide? of good candidates. I think it's, ch it's challenging to find people who are also willing to do those jobs and who are also able to be accepted by the parties involved. Okay, um, I think, Hannah, are you uh, still on? Because we know it's very late for you um, in... Um, in Sri Lanka.